We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. Nick Barris here live on a Tuesday. Um, we are on the plus if you're watching at home on TV or you can be watching us on Facebook at uh, newschannel5.com. We're streaming live there and uh, can take questions and calls for you this morning for Lynn Wood, caregiver support coordinator for Mental Health America here in the, the Mid-South region and here in Tennessee. It's good to have you on this morning, ma'am. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate getting being able to get the word out about yeah. what we do there at Mental Health America. Well, our, we touched a bit on that, and already we've got a few comments on Facebook. And Anita, actually, and this is kind of what we're along the lines of. Listen to Anita's situation and tell me what kind of help for her. She goes, I'm a caregiver, only child for my mother. She has Parkinson's and osteoarthritis in her back, and she's got the beginning of dementia. She doesn't have a lot of money. I'm still trying to work because I'm only 55 years old and I have to take care of her every single day. I am physically and mentally exhausted and she just doesn't see any end in sight. I mean, that, that, is, that encapsulates, I think, yes. one of the prototype situations so many people face. What kind of help is there for her? Because that has got to be incredibly difficult. It, it is. It is very difficult and it is a story that I hear more than I wish. Um, and uh, there are some resources, Tennessee Respite Coalition, um, they and um, Mental Health America, we do partner up. Uh, there is There are volunteer opportunities to, that someone has said, I was a caregiver and now they've gone to the uh, Tennessee Respite Coalition and they are volunteering their time. Uh, so they may be able to partner Anita's uh, loved one up with someone who can come in and give um, her a break. Is that what uh, it is? Is, is that what it is then? Like for someone like Anita, what, as you heard her situation, in a nutshell, if you're mm -hmm. talking to Anita and she's telling you, what do you imagine she needs? It's it's not, she needs someone to come in, right? And just give her right. uh, the, give uh, some her rest. She just needs rest or time to be able to, to go to work and come home and go to the grocery. Is that it? That's exactly it. She needs a moment that is about her. And she needs a moment, even if it's five minutes. One of the things that I started doing way back at the beginning of our lockdown was called a respite break in pieces. You don't have to have four hours to take a moment. When you walk to the mailbox, just walk slow. Mm -hmm. Walk slow and take deep breaths in. If your loved one is napping, um, then that's when you read a book. It might take you longer to read a book but what we do is just like when we're parents, the baby's sleeping, so now I need to get all the housework done. No, when your loved one with dementia um, is involved in an activity, and that's one of the biggest mistakes that I see, is that the family does not have a, no appropriate um, activities for their loved one with dementia or Alzheimer's. So they're wanting to entertain them. And what I am saying is, Ask them to help you find an activity and get them involved in something um, because the brain is broken. Remember we said the brain can't do a whole lot at one time. And so if you get that loved one involved in an activity, then you, you do get a few minutes by yourself. Um, and so it's taking people up on that. I mean, we're in the South. So everyone that you run into, a girlfriend, a church, another coworker is gonna say, well, let me know what I can do to help you. Take those people up on that. And if you need help in figuring that out, again, one of the resources I have that I can give away is I can help cards and it already has tasks laid out, but we don't ask. We think we can do it all on our own and we, we can't. You need to be able, because that's caregiver stress, that's burnout, that's going to be depression, anxiety, and then what happens? So we have to take care of ourselves. Support groups, they're online or they're in person. Again, get your loved one involved in an activity and then sign into a support group, even if it's in Arizona. It's still online and you can interact with someone who's living the same life. And there is strength in numbers. Um, so that that's it. They have to be able to, my dad's a caregiver for my mother and he goes to the barn you know and you know gets her settled and gets her napping or in an activity folding laundry and then he goes to the barn um you know i'm lucky that 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 my mother can still do that but um, as she continues through a process maybe that will change but 
Yeah. Um, there you know, are, we, there we, is help. We realize just how difficult it can be, too. Here in the news business, yeah. we uh, so often, as you know, broadcast out and I post on my Facebook page whenever there's a silver alert and, and exactly. the vast majority of silver alerts are usually someone suffering from dementia that somehow does wander away sometimes they take off in a car other times they just walk away mm -hmm. and and it's heartbreaking especially when they walk away in these frigid temperatures yeah. and every time I see one of these you're like well how did they get out but I, I I'm thinking to myself they probably were with caregivers who are doing the very best they can. Mm -hmm. And in just a small instance of perhaps, well, the caregiver is just as you said, stepped away for a moment, maybe even the restroom, who knows, that person mm -hmm. can just walk out. And so right. I, I don't know, I mean, um, in those extreme cases, you know, I, I guess you gotta lock the doors, make sure that they can't well, get out. Um, what do you do? Yeah, and there are, te there are techniques that we talk about with wandering. Um, sometimes it can be as simple as putting a stop sign on the back of a door. To um, see that, that and say visual, stop. Yeah, right. yeah stop. Um, if you're, you know, if I look at my front door, even in August, I have a coat rack with coats on it and it's by the front door. So if you know your loved one is prone to wandering, let's move the coat rack because coat door means go. So let's move that coat rack to a different area. Um, we might encourage someone to move the deadbolt, put one at the top of the door or at the bottom. Opening a door is a learned behavior. We learned that when we're children, your, your mama hands you and says, open the door for mama because my hands are full. And we're so proud of our children when they can help us. And that is a behavior that when you're 90, you still have that. So the opening the door is something that we can still do. But looking above or below for the deadbolt is not a learned behavior. That's a new behavior. And so sometimes we can trick the, uh, trick the brain. They try the door, it doesn't open, and they go to a different task. Uh, now out there, again, I can provide resources. There are things you can put on a door that looks like a bookcase. So the door just becomes invisible to their vision because their vision is changing with this dementia diagnosis and Alzheimer's diagnosis. Yeah. So we don't have to necessarily put them in a locked uh, community, uh, but that is uh, that would be a conversation I would have with someone because that is staff that is trained. Uh, they bring in fresh staff every seven and a half hours. Um, so, go yeah. to an adult day. day. That's, that's just it. You you move to these assisted living facilities, and you know there is the Alzheimer's unit, and that is locked. Mm -hmm. And they have a staff there, mm -hmm. and that's just it. Ideally, you know, you'd love to have every family be able to afford to put someone in a facility like that. Right. And and they don't for a lot of reasons, but usually one of the main ones is they can't afford to, and it's so cost. they're. They stay yeah. and, and keep them. And by the way, we're talking a lot about, you know, s seniors maybe and, and dementia as it comes about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Candace here says she's a caregiver for her parents and a single mother to special needs kids. Oh, so wow. So she's got a double. And I know that you specialize in the care of those with Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. and that's seniors. But, I mean, we should remember, too, I mean, there are a lot of folks that maybe have special needs children and the like. It can be any mm -hmm. age where there's an individual that needs care around the clock almost, right? And, and there's help for them right. as well. There is help for them as well. Well, you know, one of the things, especially with Alzheimer's, when we were talking about costs, and I'll go back, I will go back to this lady in just a second. But there is some programs out there through United Ways, again, Catholic Charities. There's a, a state program called Family Caregiver Support Program. Now, it's a waiting list. It's a process. You have to go through it. Um, but that does allow for some funding um, to help with, like, adult day stay. Adult day stays are a great um, untapped, you know, and I wish we had more um, because it does give uh, specifically trained people a uh, 50 forward has an adult day stay. Um, it's a, a slower, a lower scale of cost, but it gives that person a place to go, interact with their peers, and then gives the caregiver a chance to go to the doctor, yep. go to the grocery store, just sit on the back porch. There are a lot of resources for our special needs, but at the end of the day, I care for the caregiver, right? I, I'm not a clinician, I'm not a doctor. I can't, when someone says special needs, I'm like, oh, okay, well, is it autism? Let me get you here. Is it Down syndrome? Let me get you here. Is it 
um, because that's not my specialty. And even with Alzheimer's and dementia, my job is the caregiving part of the of it. How can I help you be a um, be a caregiver um, and still take care of yourself? Yeah, um, I think you made a, so, a great point as we go to the break about the adult daycare facilities. That that is where my 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 brother-in-law ended up ultimately going for a period of time there, where she was able mm -hmm. to drop him off. I think three days a week, at uh, yep. I think it was at a church, and they had yes. a good secure facility set up, and mm -hmm. activities. But it, it's and it isn't it interesting? It, truly, the circle of life because at this stage right. he was like a preschooler. It kind of was like exactly. how you drop yes. your children off to preschool. Well, she would mm -hmm. drop him off at this point and and he'd mm -hmm. stay there and so that gave her a block of about five hours three times a week and I can't tell you how invaluable that was it's it's it, earth-shattering how refreshing when the brain can think about yeah. something else other than caregiving you are so right and and ultimately you don't sometimes realize it until that moment of freedom comes and you're like wow i needed this we're going to take a break yes. lynn and we'll come back we're going to get much more information from you take more sure. comments if you're following us with questions comments on facebook at newschannel5.com or the phone lines open 737-7587 and keep in mind too um we're going to put up a phone number at the end of the program you know where you can contact um, mental health america at the very least, you can call, and as you just said, she can point you in the right direction depending on what it is you need. So we're just skimming the surface, but that number at the end of the show will help you reach out. And you know, seriously, if you're at home and you're dealing with this, call this darn number and get some help. We'll be back with more right after this.